Welcome back. Today we're going to continue exploring infinities. Are there more rational or irrational numbers? That's today's question. So quickly to remind you guys of last video, of the previous video where we discussed Hilbert's hotel and how you could basically cram two infinities into one infinity. So let's see if our intuitions of all infinities sort of being the same hold in today's video. Okay, so we have real numbers and real numbers are split into rational numbers and irrational numbers. So here I have some examples of typical rational numbers, irrational numbers. So irrational would be square root of 2, pi, e, square root of 3 minus 1 over 7, all sorts of combinations of them. Rational numbers, the technical, one of the technical definitions is they can be written as p over q, where p and q are integers. So these are examples of rational numbers. 0, 1, 2, negative 3, I won't read them all out. All right, so how would we even approach this? So let's... What we're going to do in this video, ignore the stuff on the right. I'm going to get to this a little later. Basically, what we're doing is following Georg Cantor, that's G-E-O-R-G, -E uh, Cantor's diagonalization proof. So he came up with this proof, and we'll see why it has that name. So I'm basically just following his original idea here. All right. So real numbers can be split into rational and irrational, and let's just focus on the rational for a second. So we said they can be written as p over q. So this will be p over q. And then this will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So p can be all these numbers. q can be all of these numbers. And actually, I haven't included 0, but we, we could throw in 0 as well. I'm not going to put 0 here because 1 divided by 0 is no good. That's undefined, but it doesn't matter. That's just one thing we can exclude. So let's see what would happen. So here we would have, actually, let me reverse this this way. This will be P, and these are Qs. Okay, so this will be 0 over 1, 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 over 1, so forth. This would be 0 over 2, 0 over 3. This would be... 1 over 2, 2 over 2. It basically, it's the top number here divided by the bottom number. So we have every combination. So we have a two, 2D table. So now, what it, we're going to explore infinity. So let's say I wanted to list all of the rational numbers. So like here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one. There's a little bit of a problem. If you just start counting this way, so let's say this is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 you're going to go off into this infinite direction and you will never come back and hit these numbers. So that's not going to work. So there's a very clever thing we can do and vice versa. If you try going this way, you'll never return because these are all infinite. All the rows and columns are infinite. So what we're going to do is we're going to snake our way to hit all of these numbers. So we're going to go like this. So you're basically sneaking in larger and larger loops and you will eventually hit everything. Now it's going to take you an infinite amount of time, but if you were to do this forever, you would eventually hit something. So for example, the number 17 over 93, it's not like you would never hit this. At some point you would go and hit that number. Now a little bit, one thing I wanted to mention that you may not see if, in other videos if you've ever seen this. These are just the positive numbers, so you may be thinking like, hold on, P and Q can be negative. Well, you could just, in, in, we have the positives here, but you could put the negatives going backwards here, and so then you would just snake your way into this quadrant as well up here. So you could just double, like sort of mirror image reverse this table and go in that direction. All right, so what's the point of this? The point of this is we have an infinite amount of choices for P, we have an infinite amount of choices for Q, but we've found a way of just ordering this. In other words, we've basically shown that infinity times infinity is still just infinity because each of these has an infinite number of choices, yet I could order these. So this would be number one, two, three, four, five. So if you just consider your counting numbers, there's as many of these as there are combinations of pairs of these, which is pretty shocking. All right, so that's kind of the first part of this. So we've shown, and this will come into later, 
what I mean by countable. You can actually count them. So this is the first one, second one, third one. You can order them and count them. Now, here is the next part. So using that idea of the snake, we might say, okay, well, th those are the rational numbers. How about the irrational numbers or the real numbers, which include both the rational and the irrational? So what we're going to do is consider the numbers only between 0 and 1. That's going to be enough for our argument. We could do even better, but we don't even need to do more than that. Now, imagine we, we could list all of the numbers between 0 and 1. It would be an infinite list but we should be able to count it. So is this count in countable infinity? So let's say we could do this and I'll explain in a second what these mean. All right, so all this means is the D's are just digits. The first number is your row. So this is the, these ones means you're in row one. The second one means it's the first column. So it's, it's the first digit of the first row, second digit of the first row, third digit of the first row, first digit of the second row, second digit of the second row, and so forth. So imagine we could list all of these numbers. Now, this would be an infinite list, but let's just say we could do this. So we're assuming an that these are all the real numbers between zero and one. And hopefully, we're, like our intuition might be from the previous video on infinity that it should be the same size infinity. There's as many counting numbers as there are of these numbers. So here is the clever diagonalization argument. So here's what Cantor came up with. He's gonna create a new number, let's just call it X. All right, so here's what he's gonna do is gonna be 0 0.n11, n22, n33, dot, dot, dot. Okay, we're gonna create a new number. The n just means not. So whatever this digit is, this first digit, you can pick any digit you want, but not that digit. So let's say this was a four, we could pick a seven. The second digit can be anything you want, except it can't be this digit. So if this was a three, we'll pick a five. And same thing, so the only constraint is these can be whatever you want, zero through nine, except they can't be these digits. Because these are the diagonal digits, that's why it's called the diagonalization proof. So all of these form an infinite diagonal, and so we're creating this new number with an infinite series of digits. Now, here's the key point. Let's say, we, we assume, remember, that we could order all of these numbers. It's an infinite list, but we've counted everything. So there's nothing we've missed. So this has 0 0.000 all the way through everything you want. Now check this out. Because of the way we've constructed this number, this number cannot be in the list. Why is that? This number is not the first number because it differs in, a, in this digit by design. It's not the second number because, again, we've said this digit is not the same as that. So because none of the digits are all the same as all the other digits of, of a single number, this number is not in our list because it differs in at least one digit from something here. So what does that mean? That means our infinite list here, which was countable, it was countable because we could count. Here's the first one, second one, third one has not included some real number. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the real numbers are uncountable. They are not countable. So even if you had all the time in the world, an infinite amount of time, you couldn't even order the thing, which is really mind boggling. But let, let's, maybe you have a little bit of like uh, a, a concern here. So you're thinking, okay, so we missed one number, who cares? Let's just tack this onto our list and now we've got everything. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep doing this. So I think of it like a leaky boat. So this is a leak, right? So if we add this to the list, we've patched up the leak. But I'm gonna create a second number the same way we've created this number, which is, let's say this is number five million. Then now this is gonna differ in the five millionth digit 
on that diagonal from that number. So we've created a new leak. So if you try to patch a leak, we're just going to create a new leak every time. So you can create an infinite amount of these weird numbers that are not in your list just by doing this over and over. So because of that, the real numbers, which include the rational and irrational, only between 0 and 1 already, we found that they're not countable. They're uncountable. So that's a larger infinity than, than just the rational. So because this only consists of two parts, therefore the irrational numbers must be the ones giving us this uncountability. So these are an uncountable infinity, whereas that's a countable. So countable is a smaller infinity than an uncountable. So just so you hear some of these terms, so if you want to look up other things, you're, you have a little bit of a language. Cantor referred to this, to these sizes of infinity as cardinality. So a higher cardinality would be a higher level of infinity. So your counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, the integers, your rational numbers, the P over Q, these are all what he called this Hebrew letter Aleph. So this would be the zero. So Aleph zero or Aleph null. We'll, I'll just refer to it as Aleph zero. So that's this countable infinity. Now the next level up is this Aleph one. So that would be the uncountable numbers. And that's the irrational numbers and the real numbers. So where are we going with? So there's a continuum of infinities. So just because you do infinity times infinity, as we've seen, you're still going to get a countable infinity. So you may think, oh wow, that's going to be really huge. If we, if we square infinity, then there'll be a new infinity. Nope. There, we, as we saw that snake argument, you could still create a countable list. So you needed that clever idea, that diagonalization argument to come up with a way to create things that are beyond your basic infinity. All right, so what's one of the takeaways from this video? That not all infinities are the same. There's different sizes of infinity. All right, so if you find that a little mind boggling, so did I. The other thing, which is who cares? So, well, not just about infinity. You may be wondering why even bother with this rational versus irrational thing? Who cares which one a number is? There's many, many reasons. So I encourage you guys to check the description to this video, but even more so stay tuned to the future videos where I'm gonna post more links in the description and talk about it more. So just to give you a tidbit uh, quickly, and again, check the description for more. If flower, so in nature, if you notice the, so here's my terrible flower, the leaves of a flower are arranged at certain angles. And these angles are usually at an irrational degree. So it's not like 30 degrees or 35, it's, it's some weird number. We'll go into it more later. Why is that the case? Because you might sort of already be figuring this out. If you're right over another flower, another leaf, that's not good because you're blocking the sunlight. But by having these weirdly spaced angles, so in other words, using irrational numbers, you sort of maximize the sunlight the plant gets. That's just one really big example, but there's a ton of other ones. So again, definitely look out for the descriptions and I'll see you guys in the next video.